Welcome back to the Make a Pong Unity series. This is Jonathan here. And in this video, we're going to get the ball moving. Now, the ball is going to be handled a little bit differently than the paddles because the ball is going to move on its own. We're not going to use any arrow keys on the keyboard or the mouse or any other buttons to actually move it. So to do that, we have to start dealing with something called rigid bodies. And I've prepared some PowerPoint here. Uh, let's just open this up. So rigid body components, they're basically components we add to an object in Unity and it allows us to simulate physics. Now Unity already has a very powerful built-in physics engine. So a lot of the coding that you might be worried about doing, you don't actually have to do because Unity just handles all of that on its own. So that is great news. And adding a rigid body just allows us to access all of that. And it really takes into account everything from gravity to mass to inertia and so forth. And I've just put some extra uh, link to the extra Unity documentation there if you want to read up on these components. Uh, just one thing to note here, we will be using a rigid body 2D. If you just use a rigid body, that is for 3D games, and this is not a 3D game. So let's go ahead and open this up again. Okay, so we're going to go right over to the ball, and first thing we're going to do is go add component. And uh, if you typed anything in the search box there, you're just going to have to get rid of that. But if you look under physics 2D, you'll see it has a rigid body 2D component. So we're just going to add that on here. And there's a bunch of different options. Uh, most of them we're not going to have to worry about. One of these ones here, though, constraints. We're going to freeze the Z rotation because we don't want our ball to be rotating on its own. And uh, we can just make the mass very light because it's not really going to have any mass. You can just drag that down basically all the way. Uh, but just doing that, of course, isn't going to do anything. We actually have to create a script for the ball that's going to allow it to move. So let's also go ahead and create a ball script. So I'm just going to add component, type ball, hit enter, and that creates a script. And then I'm going to drag that into the scripts folder. Just make sure that is attached. It is great. So let's open this up now and get to work. So first things first, going to make this larger so you can see. And now I'm going to type in here private rigid body 2D, and I'm just going to name this body. Uh, because the rigid body is attached onto the game object, but we still have to be able to talk to it. So in order to talk to it, we're going to type here body equals get component. And then in the uh, greater than less than brackets, we're going to type rigid body 2D open close parentheses and semicolon. And now that's going to go, I don't know why I can't just open up the taskbar, it's kind of annoying. But that is basically just gonna take a look at this ball component and see if it has a rigid body attached to it or a rigid body 2D rather, and it does. And it's gonna say, okay, we have one of those. And then we can uh, talk to it and tell it to do stuff. So now uh, that we have talked to it, we're going to, I'm gonna create a function, I'm gonna say, uh, move ball. And now I'm going to create a void move ball, open, close, squiggly brackets, and we're going to get some default values. Well, actually, first things first, we're going to create a couple of extra floats up here at the top. So again, floats are decimal point values, and I'm going to call this uh, force x and force y. Now, we are going to assign these their initial values. So, uh, force x is going to equal, oh, let's just say 5, 5f, five and force y is going to equal 0f. And now, here's how we do this. Uh, what we have to do is basically say body dot velocity equals, and now we're going to say it is equal to a new vector 2, which has an x and a y value. And if you notice, we just created an x and a y value. We're going to say force x and force y. Whoops, and force y. Okay, let's go ahead, uh, hit control S, save that, and test this out, see if it does anything. And you can see that it does. It uh, goes right down. It's listening to gravity, and it's just falling right off the screen. 
but it's also moving. You can see that it was moving to the right and, uh, well, basically down, we, which is what, it is what we want, except for the fact we don't want it to move down. And this is the difference here between simulated and non-simulated. Well, simulated means it's going to obey physics, which is correct, that's what we want. Uh, but what we don't want is it to have any gravity. So we're just going to take this gravity scale from 1 and change that to a 0. And now if we hit play again, it should go uh, straight and collapse right onto this paddle onto the right side. So perfect, that's working. Now if we took the simulated off, it actually wouldn't do anything. So we can hit play and it's just going to sit there. And that's because when we uh, get rid of simulated, uh, we, what we want is for uh, the ball to only be obeying input things like a mouse movement or uh, pressed keys. But in this case, we do want it to obey physics. So we're going to just turn simulated back on. And uh, oh, the other thing, of course, we need to do is make sure that it is bouncing off this other paddle. So there's a simple way to do that. Uh, if we go into our materials folder, we right click and go create scroll down here to where it says physics material 2d and now this creates a new material and we can call this bounce and then up here at the top we're going to change friction to zero we don't want it to have any friction and we're going to change bounciness to one now if we select our ball we can drag this bounce over the material in the box collider 2d and if we hit play again it should bounce right off perfect and it's going to go back to this paddle and it bounces back and we just have an endless, very boring game of Pong, but it is looking better. Okay, so that is working quite well and I'm going to give you guys a challenge now. So, I want you to add some variance to the vertical movement of the ball when the game starts. So we let's keep it moving to the right for now, but let's just give it a chance of either starting off by going up or going down or just going to the right. So pause the video and see if you can figure that out. Okay, welcome back. How do you do? Uh, hopefully you're able to figure this one out. It's not too difficult. So let's go right into the code and uh, where it says force y equals zero, we can just say force y equals random dot range. I'll just try minus two and positive two. Yeah, hit control S for save and go back into here. Let's try that out. There we go goes down, try it again, goes up, perfect. So now we have some variance, it just makes it a little more, uh, well, human, computer controlled, makes it more organic, it makes it more like an actual game. So how do you guys do? Do you have any questions? Please let me know. Uh, short of that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.